Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 89. Thanks very much for taking the time to tune in and watch uh, the show, give you a few updates. Again, hope everybody's staying safe. And uh, as we get through COVID-19, slowly we're making progress. But let me get into some of the stories I'm watching today. Now, I don't talk a lot about Russia, but actually there's an article that came out that Russia is also into the electrified movement. We don't hear a lot, but they are. And they've actually canceled the import taxes now for import, for electric cars for the remainder of this year in an effort to continue to promote and uh, encourage people to adopt EVs. Now, this is a zero tax rate applies to electric cars brought into Eurasian Economic Union which alongside Russia includes former Soviet republics of Armenia, Belarus, uh, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan, uh, and will last through uh, to the end of the year, December 31st, and you save 15% on those taxes. Again, good to see more of this movement happen around the world. Now, here's a neat little device that I came across. Uh, there was something earlier that I saw, which was a gas powered, but this uh, from a company called Spark Charge is a startup company. They've raised over five million bucks or so for financing to get to uh, this point in a couple of years where they're building a portable, ultra fast, modular electric vehicle charger. And the difference is, again, it's not gas powered, it's battery powered has a bunch of different battery modules that you can put into this charger and it can actually grow to a, a size of 20 kilowatts and it's a dc fast charging so you're getting dc to dc when you're charging in now right now they've only got it out for chatamo but they do have ccs in the works and it's a modular battery as i said it can replenish about a mile of range a minute you stack different battery modules together um, each weighs about about 20 kilograms excuse me you stack together uh, depending on what uh, kind of throughput you want on that and a single battery module is about three and a half kilowatt uh, uh, per three three kilowatt hours which means um, that you can at least get a charge um, and these are you know pluggable they can uh, plug into recharge using a standard 110 or 220 volt household outlet and again it comes to different modules i think it's a great idea keep your eyes on this and let me know if anybody has put an order in or where if you know if you're hearing anything from these guys as far as deliveries go let me get into some auto news. General Motors, first of all, there's a recall on some various Chevrolet Bolt EVs, the 2019 and 2020 model years. Um, it's an issue that the rear doors could open while driving. Certainly not a good thing. It would certainly catch you off a of guard. Uh, the door handle cables in about 897 affected vehicles may be too long, according to NHTSA, the National Highway Transportation Association in the U.S., who kind of regulates a lot of the recalls that we see in typically things that happen in the U.S. happen in Canada and around the world as well. I believe these are only U.S. affected vehicles right now. Um, the recall is expected to begin May the 11th and owners can contact Chevrolet at this number that I'm putting up here um, and the reference a GM's number for the recall as I'm putting that on the screen as well. Um, you can reference those numbers for the recall to see if you're impacted. Um, basically, they will go in there and fix the door handle, I believe. There's a, the cable could also um, render the inside door handle inoperable uh, as far as that. So they're going to replace the cable in both rear doors free of charge. So something that probably should take less than an hour or about an hour of, uh, of time out of your time. So encourage you if you have a, an, a potentially impacted model year 2019 or into the early 2020s, give GM a call. I talked about Pulsar starting production uh, production in the last uh, couple of shows. Well, they've also announced U.S. pricing now on the Polestar 2, and it's right in line. In fact, it's slightly less than originally projected, coming in at a base MSRP of $59,900 USD. Um, now, with various state incentives and, of course, the full tax credit that's available on Polestar because they're a new brand, you could qualify for up to $9,500 um, off of that uh, through various means. So it could bring that price down quite a lot. Um, I won't get into all the specs because you've heard me talk about them quite a lot. There are some options that you can add on to this, a $5,000 performance pack. You can get a full Napa leather interior for four grand if you if you care about that stuff. 20 inch alloy wheels for 1200 bucks and metallic paint colors for 1200 bucks. That seems to be the norm now for paint and wheels. Um, production, as I mentioned, already started and US deliveries should begin in the summer of 2020. Again, with COVID-19 and delays, we might see that pushed a bit. 
but uh, keep your eyes on that if you have a reservation in you should be getting notified soon about some of the things now Polestar is also going to do something similar to Tesla eventually they will open up retail showrooms some physical spaces in some of the major urban areas um, and some of the major markets throughout the US of course California and some of the other states but uh, most of their purchasing is online right now and they will be available in all 50 states um, and then a Polestar will also have lease and financing options soon which they will announce so glad to see Polestar moving forward last show I talked about Volkswagen and the ID3 that they opened up the Zwickau plant they've actually started now production of course but they restarted in a slower format to take into account COVID-19 and the distancing and all they need to do for PPEs and all that kind of stuff in the plant so they're only at 50 ID3s per day as a production run right now which they're slowly and gradually going to start to increase over time of course they're taking a numerous and additional measures to protect the health of the workforce uh, and all that kind of stuff and also you know starting the supply chain again a lot of those elements have been idle for the last couple of months so those elements need to pick up of course uh, so that they can keep building these things and also on april 27th so this week the volkswagen will also resume production of the e-golf which is at a dresden facility so they are starting to get up back up into automobile production and uh, wish them all the best so for those who have been following lucid air you may have seen this video but this video surfaced recently about some winter testing that uh, lucid did with their prototypes um, they did extensive winter testing which is an important for of course it, seeing how the vehicles handle in the worst conditions because in taking a test drive in a beautiful sunny day is great but when you're stuck in a foot of snow and trying to get around icy roads that's where really the rubber hits the road so being able to test these things as automakers do is great um, they completed three phases of winter testing over the last few months um, for before signing off to getting close to production of the lucid air um, they had beta 4 and beta 5 were out in minnesota as you're seeing in the video some cool stuff as they're sliding around and doing different tracks and stuff and these were in temperatures that got to as low as minus 27 degrees fahrenheit or minus 33 degrees centigrade that is cold folks so it's cold where you throw hot water in the air and it crystallizes pretty cool if you haven't done that try that next time um, so it's great for validating vehicle dynamics and uh, anti-lock braking, traction control, all stability, all that kind of stuff. So just good to see Lucid advancing forward as they get closer to production. Now I've talked about MG in Europe with the ZS, which is going very well for them, and it's a great, great buy. Well, they are ahead of the curve as well. It seems that they really understand the UK marketplace, and they've announced that they want to bring out the MG5, uh, which is really going to be based on an upgraded and rebadged SAIC row EI5. It's a lot to say, which has been in China since 2018, but they're going to bring this MG band, uh, branded and badged vehicle, the MG5, to the UK marketplace. Now, it's a, a, an estate, uh, as the UK, as the Brits call it. Uh, we call it here station wagons, you may be, you know, or you know, compact wagons kind of thing. Uh, so again, it'll be MG's second all-electric vehicle that they're going to bring to the to the UK marketplace sometime this year. But I would say that could slip into 2021 quite easily. Not many details, but if it's based on the same specs as the current EI5, that particular vehicle has a 52 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack for a NEDC range. Take those with a little grain of salt of about 420 kilometers, 260 odd miles, with 85. Uh, kilowatt hour kilowatt electric motor um, so again it's going to be the first all-electric state that we'll see in europe uh, at least it's poised to be and they are hoping again to start deliveries in q4 now they may because it's a rebadged vehicle they may tweak it a bit uh, for their own brand but again i'm, I'm really uh, excited to see what mg is doing they are getting it they are taking this electrification to more of the mass market the way the zs is priced with especially with incentives it's a really really well priced vehicle for what you get and uh, i hope that the uh, five follows suit now we haven't heard much about subaru and electrification however they are um, looking to build their first model of a subaru electric according to some media reports that i've been scouring it's supposed to be called the uh evolve tis evolve -tis. 
um, and it will have a, its world premiere in the Tokyo Motor, Motor uh, Show in October of this year, if, if of course that still happens, because a lot of the shows have been canceled. Uh, this is an electric SUV type vehicle, will be based on the platform that's been developed by Subaru and Toyota. They, they've done some platform development, some co-engineering, so that'll be interesting to see. It estimated to have a range of about 500 kilometers. It should be the same size as the SUV Cross Trek Hybrid. That's out today, but of course it'll be a different vehicle. No other specs as far as time frames and pricing and all that stuff, but well, you know, what can I say? Subaru is, at least they're finally getting into the game slowly but surely. You know, it's it's interesting to see a few of these holdouts that are just taking their sweet blank time to get into this marketplace. But uh, I wish them all the best of luck and I'll keep looking for more info. So I've been humming and hawing about reporting on this story and I thought I better just because somebody's going to ask me about it. There's a story that came out a little while ago for, of a company uh, uh, based in New Jersey called Triton Solar. Um, and they just came up with a, a website with a bunch of renderings and the, call, on their vehicle called the Triton Model H. And looking at the pictures of this, this is a monster of a vehicle, a beast, of course. Um, it's an all-electric eight-seat SUV. That's what they claim that they are going to build. Um, now, they talk about battery packs of 200 kilowatt hours to get over 700 miles of range. They're trying to follow Rivian's concepts with an electric motor, one per wheel, to give it all-wheel drive. And um, they are accepting pre-orders as well uh, with $5,000 deposits with the first 100 kind of founders edition addition requiring a further $135,000 within five working days. Well, I'm obviously going in this article says the same thing. I'm advising caution. Uh, these guys don't look like much. They threw up a website with some renderings. There's no other, you know, solid information about launch dates, about production sites, a facility, uh, even plans for alpha, betas, pre-production uh, prototypes, all that kind of stuff. And the website kind of really looks kind of chintzy to me and, and cheap. Um, it, it doesn't give you much information. I went through that with a fine tooth comb. So this could just be some random, it could be a marketing test of something or it could be whatever. Who knows? Just to gauge what's going on. So tread lightly, folks. Those are my words of caution. But take this very lightly. And that's another reason that I don't talk a lot about Atlas. Some people have asked me about those guys because they're similar. You know, when I start seeing some real stuff like a prototype and I start seeing a factory and all this kind of stuff or, or alliances made so that they can build things, um, then I start to get excited because now we're, we're moving forward. But this costs a lot of money and I certainly wouldn't be putting five grand or 140 grand down on a rendering. I'll tell you that much, especially from a company that's not even really up there. So good luck to them. And the last story is kind of cute. Um, the AI, if I got that right, uh, the AA ways in China, have, of course, they have an A5 all electric vehicle. They've uh, put some patents down on an automated charging robot uh, called Carl. And um, it's basically a mobile robot. You kind of just park your EV, as you're seeing in the video here, and you use an app to, um, to summon the charging unit. And this thing shows up next to your vehicle. And um, apparently it's smart enough to plug into the car and it starts charging it uh, without the driver present, doesn't need anybody present using its own mobile energy storage. So it's kind of a rolling battery pack of uh, 30 or 60 kilowatt hours. So substantial size of amount of energy that's in this thing. Um, now the video doesn't show it opening the doors to the charger uh, a unit, um, the hatch. So I would imagine that the driver would have to open that first themselves, leave it open and then summon the robot and take off or do whatever. But once the charging is complete, Carl moves on to the next EV or can return to a base, it can plug in and continue to recharge until it's called for again. So I like the idea when you're in office or in your environments where maybe the, the chargers are iced, which we see a lot, or they're full, or there's only a couple, and you're down at the end or whatever, and you need a charge, uh, and they offer it, then this thing would be great, comes out, pl pl uh, plops itself next to your vehicle, and plugs in, and off you go. So, cool idea, and I love to see this kind of stuff, and uh, wait to hear more about it, I guess.
All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 89. Thanks for, again very much for tuning in. Thanks for everybody for uh, watching it on YouTube. If you like it, please do so. If you've got comments, please send them in. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did. It's free. It doesn't cost you, and we won't hound you with emails or any of that stuff. If you want to, click the bell and get notified when I push a show or something out there. You will, but you don't have to do that as well. So again, thanks very much for that humble thanks you know who you are patreon supporters um, i'm always indebted to you um, thank you very much and uh, especially during these times where I continue to get support it's much appreciated if you don't know what patreon is check out the website even a dollar a month can help me out appreciate uh, any any thought that you might have around that as i continue to do the shows and look to do more um, of course, I hope everybody is staying safe during these times and follow the, the rules of staying home and saving lives because it does work. We are seeing a lot of areas now, the curve flattening and a number of new cases subsiding, the increases subsiding in, in a lot of countries. So please follow those safety measures. And of course, keep your ear and eyes out on the EV marketplace as it continues to evolve during these challenging times. And it's my hope that when we're out of this, or at least we can look to some normalcy, people may be more in tune and receptive to the idea of an electric vehicle for health and all the benefits that EVs give you with what's going on. Uh, people may, may see that. We'll have to wait and see. Industry still has to build more. So again, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. And until the next time, uh, everybody again, stay safe. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Take care.